Hi, I'm Melissa Horgan, and this is Liz Garcia. And along with Grant Bitzer, we are talking about um, elbow pronation and measuring the range of motion using goniometry. So to start off with, we'll talk about the indications and contraindications. So some contraindications to um, elbow pronation would be if there's any pain, um, inflammation, any injury uh, due to uh, overuse, for example, uh, median nerve entrapment between the two um, teres heads, and then or radial head subluxation. Um, and so these things are going to cause you know, decreased uh, range of motion, decreased um, use or active or passive range of motion as well. Um, go so then we want to go through the biomechanical explanation okay. of the procedure. So... Um, Okay, so what we're with elbow pronation, the joints involved in elbow pronation are uh, proximal radial ulnar joint, the distal radial ulnar joint, and the humoradial joint. Um, and so with pronation, it occurs in the transverse plane. And so what is happening is um, that uh, the axis of rotation is through the center of the radial head and the distal ulnar head. Um, so the radio head rotates within the annual ligament and it spins on the capitulum of the humerus. Um, and so that is what is occurring. The muscles involved in pronation are pronator quadratus, pronator teres, and flexor carpi radialis muscles. So now we're going to talk about the steps for goniometric measurement. First, you need to make sure you expose the bony landmarks. By doing this, you need to have um, all clothing removed from the area. So remember to appropriately drape as needed also. For forearm pronation, you need to have the ulnar styloid process, the distal humerus, and the forearm exposed. You need to stabilize the stationary arm of the goniometer. This should be parallel to the midline of the humerus. You also, also need to stabilize the patient's position. In this case, you're stabilizing the distal humerus. Recognize the start arc and end of the motion, so you'll be able to instruct the patient to pronate elbow in the gravity-resisted field, and then you'll have the patient move themselves through this, and followed, followed by that, go through passive range of motion of elbow pronation. Finally, you need to reassess movement of the gravity-resisted field in active range of motion and correct for any substitutions and compensations. To measure the active range of motion, stabilize the distal humerus, put the goniometer fulcrum at the ulnar styloid process, the stationary arm parallel to midline of the humerus, the movable arm flat across the posterior forearm. After that, you will measure passive range of motion by supporting the patient's limb. Remeasure the active range of motion if active range of motion was greater than passive range of motion. Some things to consider are that active range of motion must be against gravity. Compare the involved side to the uninvolved side. Be aware of gravity field and use to your advantage. For example, you would want to have the person's forearm supported on the table. Um, make sure the fulcrum is over the styloid process and do not indent the skin with the goniometer. Normal range of motion for elbow pronation is 80 degrees. Functional range is 50 degrees. Now we're going to demonstrate a scenario with a physical therapist and a patient. I'm just going to wash my hands really quick. Hi, right, Liz. My name is Grant Bitzer. I'm your physical therapist. Uh, would you come over here? We're going to help push your elbow pronation. Okay? Okay. During this goniometric measurement, the therapist can be positioned standing or sitting directly in front of the patient. The patient should be sitting with their shoulder in zero degrees of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and rotation so that the upper arm is close to the side of the body. Flex the elbow to 90 degrees. Position the forearm midway between supination and pronation so that the thumb points towards the ceiling. Ideally, the patient's forearm should be resting on a level table or plinth. 
If one is not available, use your hands to stabilize the arm in the correct position. So Liz, I'm going to explain the purpose of this test for you. So uh, what we want to do is we want to check the structure of your joint and check the integrity of your soft tissues here. Um, and by using the gone goniometer, we're going to measure your active range, so what you can do, and then also the passive range, so how I can move you through the motion, okay? And both those are an assessment of your muscle strength and neuromotor control. Um, and so, so first I have you positioned correctly, and what I'll have you do is I'm going to show you how to do the motion uh, of pronation. You're going to perform it, and I'm going to move you through the motion, and then you're going to move again, and I'm going to measure you. Okay. And then last, I'm going to move you through it and measure you, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to measure you twice. Okay. Uh, and with this whole thing, uh, we're going to get a good measure of your elbow pronation, and with that, we can determine outcomes assessment, so we can set up a plan, uh, make some goals, and with the goal, plan and implementing the plan. Okay? okay? That's good. All right. Okay, so now you want to stabilize the distal end of the humerus to prevent medial rotation and abduction of the shoulder. Also, support the distal radius, making sure the wrist does not deviate. Now pronate the forearm by moving the distal radius in a volar direction so that the palm of the hand faces the floor. The end feel may be hard because of contact between the ulna and the radius, or it may be firm due to tension at the dorsal radioulnar ligament of the inferior radioulnar joint, the interosseous membrane, and the supinator muscle. Compensation seen can be medial rotation and abduction of the shoulder. This is why you're stabilizing. The fulcrum of the goniometer is aligned laterally and proximally to the ulnar styloid process. Align the stationary arm parallel to the anterior midline of the humerus. The movable arm is aligned across the dorsal aspect of the forearm. And from here, the measures are recorded. Okay, so Liz, I'm going to have you come down towards the table. And that is a measure of... This time we have a measure of 82 degrees.